It is the case that shot Claremont County and the entire tri-state. Chad Dorman now pleading guilty to killing his three young sons last summer. He will spend the rest of his life in prison. We thank you for joining us at 6 o'clock. I'm Tanya O'Rourke. Craig has tonight off. In June of 2023, Dorman shot his sons, 7-year-old Clayton, 4-year-old Hunter, and 3-year-old Chase, execution style just outside their home in New Richmond. His wife was also injured. He shot her in the thumb as she tried to save one of the boys. But as family and community grieved, the path to justice took a turn. Even though Dorman allegedly confessed during his arrest and interrogation, a judge had ruled that his Miranda rights had been violated. The evidence not allowed in court. But today, with a plea deal, the family might finally find some closure. We bring you team coverage tonight. Joining me, WCPO 9 News reporter Andrew Rowan and Connor Steffen. Let's start with Andrew because you were in the courtroom, a witness to the end of what has been a horrific period of time for everyone involved in this case. How was Dorman in court today? Tanya, Chad Dorman was stoic for much of today's hearing, and while he did not show any emotion after admitting to murdering his three sons, the emotional impact for what he did weighed heavy inside. In a blue shirt, Chad Dorman walked out from behind bars for possibly the last time. How do you plead? Guilty. A guilty plea ending a difficult 14 month chapter. It is unmistakably clear that you will spend the rest of your life uh, in prison with no chance for parole. Three life sentences running consecutively, one for each of his young sons, Clayton, Hunter and Chase, and additional years for assaulting his ex-wife and stepdaughter as they tried to save the boys. It is so painful to see you here and in jail for the rest of your life. A statement from his stepdaughter, at the time 14 years old, was read by an attorney. I will never in a million years ever forgive you for what you have done and hope you pay for your actions like you deserve. But I will never hate you. His ex-wife sobbed as her statement was read. I struggle every day with the will to get up or give up. The plea deal, which was proposed by the defense, took the death penalty off the table. But it meant the trauma of that day would not have to be relived in court. It was the right decision to do justice for these little boys, for Clayton, for Hunter, and for Chase. And part of that justice is by giving their mom and their sister some relief. In court, Dorman did not speak. His defense attorneys apologized, saying Dorman wished he had treated his mental health. Chad would never have done that except that he was delusional, he was in psychosis when this happened. Tonight, Chad Dorman will spend the rest of his life in a cell, as a family and a community will spend the rest of their lives mourning the lives cut short. The law will never replace my life and give me back what I have lost. I will hold the life I had and lived so close to my heart forever. Grief will never go away as it is all the love that is left with no place to go. All right, Andrew, there were some really intense moments we just heard there from Dorman's ex-wife. We heard from his stepdaughter. We were not allowed to show them on camera, but you were in that courtroom. So talk to us about the moment that they spoke directly to him, what that felt like, what it looked like. Yeah, Tanya, there was this really powerful moment when Chad Dorman's stepdaughter gave her statement. A prosecutor read it on her behalf. They both were standing up at the podium, but the stepdaughter was turned around 180 degrees. Her back was to the judge. She was looking directly in the eyes of her stepdaughter for the entirety of that, state, uh, of that statement. Chad Dorman at times avoided his gaze looking at her. At other times went back, looked directly at her and nodded his head. She kept up that gaze on him as she left the courtroom. Tanya, in addition to her statement, that gaze said a lot. It sure did, Andrew. Thanks so much. And we want to go now to WCPO 9 News reporter Connor Steffen. Connor has been speaking with people outside the courthouse. How is the new Richmond community reacting, Connor? Well, Tanya, when we spoke with people this morning, they had no sense of the closure that would come in just hours when Chad Dorman pleaded guilty and received his sentence. Now, this case has loomed heavily over this small community, which we returned to this morning. The site where officers arrested Chad Dorman back in June of 2023 
for shooting his three sons, Clayton, Hunter, and Chase, now has a cross staked in its yard next to a plaque that reads, God be with you. It's a sure sign neighbors haven't forgotten about those three boys, which one person called New Richmond's guardian angels. We asked them earlier what justice looks like in this case, and we do have to mention one of the people we spoke with witnessed everything unfold, so they asked to remain anonymous. Honestly, I just want answers at this point. I just want it to be over. Uh, I really don't want it going towards the way of pleading insanity, but I just want him to put away for good. I have very strong feelings about this, mm -hmm. about, you know, when somebody does that, I'm sorry, it was murder. Mm -hmm. It was forethought. He knew what the heck he was doing. Both, both neighbors say there, if there's anything to take away from this case, is that the community has lost three bright young boys. And with Dorman now receiving a life sentence without the possibility of parole, it's safe to say that this community finally has some sense of closure. We're live in Claremont County, Connor Steffen, WCPO 9 News. Thank you, Connor. So we've been following this case for more than a year now since the moment it happened. We'll continue to bring you the best coverage possible. We continue our reporting during our 7 o'clock newscast. We are still in that community tonight talking with people, and you'll find the latest updates on this case on the WCPO 9 app.